Doctor Who, the Massacre, a Sabbath Volumes Eve, Episode 2, The Sea Burger. To Connolly's house, crest on. I tell you, Nicholas, he refuses to take any precautions. Our noble lord, Harry and Nevia, will, will not believe that the Catholics are plotting to kill him. Mas Morris. You know, so that, is that so surprising? He's married to the king's sister. You must put on a show of trusting the Catholics, Gaston. Trust them? Aha! You know how far we can do that? You told him what the girl overheard? Moose. Yes, Gaston. What did he say? Moose. He refuses to pay any attention to a servant girl's story, Gaston. But you must convince them, Nicholas. Uh, you are a man's secretary. Now speak to Gaudry again. Now tell me. Unless I, no, I've done more than I can. Now you must wait till we find out something more, or uh, the Catholics to make a move. Gaston, their move is likely to be a knife and nearer his back. What happened to that Englishman, Stephen? Unless he's gone back to the tavern to find his friend, Tavern. There's a thumping on the do- closed door. Stephen, excuse me, I wonder if the door is open. Landlord, has anyone asked for me? Landlord, what, what's that? Oh, it's you, Monsieur Stephen, a friend I was waiting for last night. Have you seen him? No, not today, Stephen. But he didn't. He didn't return last night and leave a message. Then he closes the door again and then after Steve enters. No, I haven't seen your friend since you left with him at a curfew last night. Stephen, not not that friend. I'm looking for the old man, the one who was here with me yesterday morning. Well, you should have met him. We sh- he should have met me here last night. Look, he's wearing a large travelling cloak and wearing a s- carrying a silver top crane. They don't know who's been in here. We're closed. They don't see him. Not last night or this morning? They don't know. I've got to go to work to do. You need to go help go and ask for it. Your Harlecott friends, the Courtley's house. I must, for goodness sake, Gaston. It's quite likely we drew the wrong conclusions, Gaston. Look, the girl heard a man talking about Vassay. And what would happen again oh, before the week was out? Must? No, don't, she didn't. She heard one and mentioned the name Vassay. And then, just before she went away, she heard him say it would happen before the week was out, Gaston. What's the difference, miss? It's more quite like the name Vassay. Nothing to do with the Miska here, there. It was referring to something else entirely. Gaston, look, Nicholas, you can't. Stephen is shown in by the servant. Stephen, Nicholas, I'm sorry to have bother you again. Moose, don't worry, Anton. Bring another glass, Anton. Yes, monsieur. Anton leaves, Moose. You haven't found your friend? Stephen, well, no. I went to the tar, the place where he left them. There wasn't any sign of him. Gaston, well, if he's a fool and found the Catholics who roam against about the streets, heaven help him. Moose, many of us followers are just as bad, Gaston, no, no, oh, nonsense, Moose, paying attention to Gaston. Now, what can I do to help you, Stephen? Well, my friend went to Port St. Martin, as you know, I was trying to find him there. I'm afraid I can't remember your directions. Moose, I come with you, Stephen, thanks. Gaston, but before you go, I think you, you have a visitor, Moose, who? Gaston, Robert Colbert. Recently appointed to a temporary secretary to Abbot of Beaubrose. During his stay in Paris, we wager he's come to fetch the girl. Gaston opens the door to the new arrival. Gaston, an unexpected visit, Monsieur Cobbett. Cobbett, Mr. Gasmoose? Moose, yes, Cobbett. Forgive me for calling on you like this. I believe that yesterday you were put on some inconvenience by a servant from the household of Abbot of Beaubrose. Moose inconvenience, uh, Cobbett. I understand she ever heard someone say something and was frightened by it. She ran away. I hear that you kindly gave her refuge in her own kitchens. Gaston, and what, what could the abbot say that would frighten a girl or servant so? Cobbett, the abbot was not in, then in residence. She heard someone speak of her say, believe she was there, that the unfortunate business took place. She was frightened, I suppose, by the memory, own memory, rather than by anything she heard. Gaston? And so you discuss the slaughter of Versailles so gaily, go, Cobbett. People can talk of the town without referring to that. The servant enters. Gaston, out, out, out. The servant leaves. Gaston, Cobbett. But surely there, there is this. That is very girl. Gaston, the girl. 
Gus Cabot. Yes, her name is Anne Cablet. Allow me to take me her with me. Gus, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. You really must be mistaken. That girl is called um, Gunnar Villavine. You've been working here ever since the Admiral came to Paris. Cabot, I see. Forgive me for troubling you. Cabot leaves. Says Stephen, there's the same man full of a friend to the, from the tavern. Muse is sure. Stephen, I'm positive. Muse, that will be the abbot of Rose. What with your friend? Gaston, well, well, the abbot's come. You con yourself at all for the sake of a servant. Turn it as a save and jo- join Gaston at the window where they can observe Richard Corbett talking, talking to the abbot in the street below. At a moment, the abbot turns of his face is completely clear. Stephen, but that's the doctor. That's the doctor talking to Roger Cobbett. I must go to him. Thank you for your help. Gus has gone. Now, one moment, Stephen. Yes. Gaston, you say that man is your friend? Gaston, Stephen, yes. Stephen, Gaston, and how long have you been working for Abbot of the Rose? Stephen, what? It's Gaston, the man talking to Cobbett is the Abbot of the Rose. Is that what capacity do you serve him? Stephen, what are you talking about? Well, that man is the doc. At least he's gone. I, I look, I look, it looked like the doctor, but, but you have, if you're certain, Gaston is certain he's a doctor. I don't like Catholic spies, Stephen. Oh, no, spy, listen to me. I thought the man was a doctor. I say, if I say that he was a, 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 a Brucey, then I must be mistaken. Maybe perhaps, Stephen, look, Nicholas, I can prove that doctor looks like the abbot. Show me the way to Sports and Martin. We'll go to shop with Pristine, the FFR, Caffrey, and meet the doctor. Scuss on and walk straight to to Catholic trap. Stephen, it's no trap, Nicholas. If I was by, would I be such a fool to betray myself like this? Guess on no, Nicholas, it's no. Moose, I think he may be telling the truth. I'll come with you. Guess on, yes, so I. Moose, so stay, no, stay here. I, if I don't come back, go to the Admiral. Guess on, look, look, you're mad. Listen, Moose, we've got to find out. Come, monsieur. For your sake, I hope we find your friend. The Lavouve. The Alta Room, Monsieur Gaspar Tabes, and some of our discussing the latest turn of events, Tabes. You say the Abbot went to the house himself? The Bell. Yes, Marshal. He swear it felt an imperative to g- g- get the girl back, Tabes. The Abbot's a fool. The girl's not important. You must have told the Heligots all that she knows, all that she overheard. If they made anything, if they had made anything of it, they would have acted by now. All he's done is arouse further suspicion. To how he's an astute man in some ways, after all. Without him, we wouldn't have had to have the help of Monsieur Borrex. Tanez Borrex has yet to prove himself. Assassin might do as well. To how he's eminence, the Colano. The Cardinal. Trust the Abbot. Tell her, yes, I'm sure. I, I'm not sure that I do. There's something odd about this. Watch him closely, Stephen, Simon. May they take a note of everything he says or does and report it to me. Cavell, yes, Marshal. There's another matter of Nicholas Moose. He's playing host to a young instrument, Therese. Ah, to the courtier's house? Who is he? Tell the Vell, I don't know. Therese, ah, perhaps our fine Admiral is making a secret overtures for the English. The Vell, it seems that he's stranger to France, Therese. All the more reason why Elizabeth of England would send him. Finding out more about this Englishman, go now and stay close to the Abbot. And Simon, tell him I shall bring word later concerning the sea beggar. Decoding, this interest in the Dutch at last. Monsieur Torellis, to this, oh, I, do I have no decoding. I didn't hear you come in. Decoding, I hope you're looking with the plight of the unfortunate Dutch the sea beggars, or as you call them. My fate to Spain is just one. Torres. So frequently you tell us in the council, the courtly, your only quarrel with the Dutch is that they are Protestants, not Catholic, Therese. It also be the reason why you, you support them. But rest assured, we are always examining their claim for France's aid. The courtly, it's something I suppose, that is something I suppose to Therese. Tell me, have you any news of what uh, the other ally of yours, England? 
did caught me. No, why should I? It's totally strange. I heard that you have an English staying with, and staying with you. It's called me. I I, there is a lost stranger who lodged at my house last night. I believe he was English, Therese. You brought you no word? Did caught me. You're a strong man, Therese. You see shadows where there is no sun, Therese. Perhaps, believe me, I have an audience with the Queen Mother. Did caught me. Don't let me detain you. Port St. Martin's moves. We've been up and down every street in Port St. Martin, Stephen. But his shop must be around here somewhere. Look, Stephen rushes across the street, bumped into an old lady, woman. Stephen, sorry. Stephen knocks at the door. Woman, rushing about, knocking folks down. You young little one have no sense. Moves. Sorry, my friend's looking for someone. Well, that's no reason to go pushing me over. Oh, and you can stop making all that noise. You're disturbing the whole neighbourhood. Nobody lives here. Moves, what, Monsieur Polistini doesn't leave, use his, his shop? Oh, my lady, does it look like it? Nothing it lives, nothing lives here except the rat, Stephen. Where's Polistini now? Muse, how long since he's lived here? Stephen, oh, a long time, two years about. He's arrested for his sake. Stephen, what, what do you mean? You mean he's in prison? Well, the burnt, I expect. He isn't, if he isn't, he should be. Muse, your story is thinner than before. He said the doctor is with Christelin. Who is why all cats dead? Stephen. He's only said she might he might be Muse. Well about doctor, Stephen, I don't know. Muse, I think not I do. Your friend is the abbot of a booze. Stephen, no, at least I see how he can be, unless Muse what? Stephen, is it possible the doctor is pretending to be the abbot? Muse. For what reason do you wait to find the abbot? Muse, so you can go further instructions, Stephen Nicholas. Believe me, I know nothing about Versailles or the Catholics or half of what you talk about. The doctor is pretending to be there, but then we have a very good reason. Please let me go to him. Should I find out there is a plot of some kind? I should go pump and tell you. Come back and tell you, Muse. No, you'll come back with me now. Are the others who should decide before I do. Take your seat firmly on the arm, but to your cooperation. The close guys in back the way they come have come. Uh, at the corner of the road, Stephen sees his chance and twists around, then liquors crashing into the parcel by the pelts away down the street. Abbott's department, Deville. Where is the Abbott? He may, he knew I m- might bring word. I've been waiting here for half an hour. Cobbett, we may be with the Maverette. Bevel, will you never learn? Call the Sutton Pelrex. See, Burgers should find out Maverette in his parish with Pipot and his guard at once. Why do you think we've chosen code names so, so very carefully, Cobbett? I'm sorry, Nevelle. You've already been responsible for one mistake. There must there must be no more, Cobbett. I pray he parted with Rabbit at the Courtney house. I will not tell me where he did not tell me where he was going. Devil, oh very well. Tell me what you know about the Abbot Cabot. He had been specially appointed by the Colonel Devel, I don't mean that. How long has he been have you known him, Cabot? I only met him yesterday. He's worked off for his eminence a Colonel of Lorraine for many years has done him many services, Devel. He saw him for the first time yesterday? Covert. No, I met him for the first time. I saw him once in a political meeting held by the Cardinal. Deville, and what was the only time you seen him? Covert, yes. Deville, yeah, tell me. When you, you saw Nicholas Moose this morning, who else was there? Covert, the Viscount de Lorraine, and the girl is certainly there before I saw her, because I saw her. Deville, she's not in Portsmouth now. No one else is with them. Covert, a film of fair men, I, but I don't know him. Devel, was he English? To Covert, I don't know. He didn't speak. Devel, I want I want you to find out about him. If he's English, find out who he is and where his business is in France. The Courtney's home, and I like, like I said, Monsieur, I have never seen him before in my life. I just ran into him when the Abbot's guards were after me. I, f- he, I thought he, sh- he was one of them. He was why? Well, I am. Well, because I was frightened. When he held out his arms so to stop me, I thought he was one of them, but he isn't. Moves. Why, how do you know? And because he's kind, monsieur, and gentle. Gaston enters. Gaston, Nicholas, you're back. How was the St. Paul St. Martin? Moves. Be quiet, Gaston. Now listen, Gaston. 
Well, there's a welcome. I got the good news. Henry Nevele has decided to increase his guard moves, and I have bad news. Stevens escaped. You must have sent. You've been sent here by the Catholics, and that's not true, Gaston. What? What's that? And forgive me, Monsieur, but we. Uh, well, are we sure he's a stranger here? He knows nothing and anything of what was going on in Paris. Why he didn't even know? But we were winning. Gaston, get out of here. And but Monsieur, Gaston, get out and leaves. Gaston, you too kind to be have you too kind to those nothings. Now tell me what's been happening. Muse, we didn't find a man who's supposed to look like that, but I've been Stephen back. Here when I got he got away. Gaston how? Muse, he's on my way back when he suddenly tripped me and pushed me into a passerby. I think I'm surprised I went after him, but it's powerless. Guess I knew I should have come with you, Steve. You, do we know where to find him? Moves, yes, with the Abbot of Ambrose. Wow. That was for the Abbot's apartment. By early evening, Stevens found his way to the apartments where the Abbot Ambrose is lodging. He's determined to find out what he's doing and coming on. He suddenly answers the line in the house with a man he believes to be the doctor in disguise. Lurking in shadow, Stephen cautiously approaches the house. Two guards in the Abbot's library pass close by, but he's forced to hide. When they're gone, Stephen spots a lighted window, making sure the coat is, is clear. Himes up peers over the steel. In the room, we can see the Marshal Therese with Simon Deville and Roger Colbert. There's no sign of Abbot Abreu's. Do you even decide to listen to him for a while? Perhaps he can overhear something of use. Abbot's headquarters, apartments, two layers. To my Lord Abbot, he's not here. I don't know where he's found. Colbert, I'm afraid not, Monsieur Marshal. Therese, I asked my instructions to, uh, to you early today. I hoped I sh- could not, but. Put your f- more faith in you. Come on, I'm sorry. We didn't look everywhere. To this, there's a draft in here. Let's close the shutters. Stephen ducks d- down. Harry is Georgia. Closes the shutters. Now we avoiding discovery. To this. Between you, you will find Abbott. You will give him his message from me. Stay the decision and made. Do you know what you mean? If it is, he will interrupt us, me, Simon. Tell him the sea bugger dies tomorrow. Come to tomorrow where? To theirs, we shall tend an early council meeting to no eve. When he returns, Berlix will be waiting for him. Come Do you wish that the abbot retracts Berlix? To Tavarines. No, Berlix. Already has his orders. You may tell the abbot also when you find out him. Is that clear? Come Yes, Castle. To is good. To his leaves, Deville. So the royal command has been given. Covert. What do you mean, Deville? The order doesn't come for the Marshal Tavares. It comes for the Queen Mother. The sound approaching guard, Steve, jumps down from the window and hurries away. The court, the Courtney's house, Stephen is now shown to the Hegelica's quarters. Anton, you won't be long, monsieur, if you wait in here. Steve, thanks. Anton leaves. For a few moments, the door opens. It was Gaston Nicholas. Here, yeah, there. Yeah. What are you doing, Stephen? Listen. Where's Nicholas? I have some important news. Gaston, I sure you have. I have got some news for you, too. Get out of here. Stephen, look. You don't understand, Stephen. Gaston, what placement are you looking for? A spy. Some more information for your abbot? Stephen, listen to me. Gaston, I'd rather listen to a pack of screaming devils. Steve, Gaston, there is a... Gaston, get out of it. Gaston, Steve, for goodness sake, Steve, some pulls a sword on Stephen. Who is in alarm? He falls back to draw his own sword in an attempt to refrain himself. Gaston lunges forward to attack. Stephen, blocking away, he's succeeds only by a fluke. Continue, Gaston continues to advance, his eyes burning with rage. Stephen retreats rapidly. He no desire to get in the fight. At least Gaston no realize, last Gaston realized that Steve would not fight him. Changing tactics. Disgusted with Englishman, Gaston disarms him with ease and Stephen's sword clatters to the floor. Gaston, get out of here. Stephen, Gaston, Gaston, get out. 
Stephen leaves and Gaston kicks the furniture with rage. Muse, Gaston, what are you doing, Gaston? So you're having a bad effect on me, my friend. I've just read the wretch's life, Muse. What are you talking about? Gaston, the Englishman. That Englishman. Muse, Stephen? Gaston, yes, I caught him here. Muse, what did you say? Gaston, say nothing. Muse, but why did he come back? Gaston, he's spying. I caught him. I'm going for your papers. Muse, you must have had a message otherwise. you never come back. Gaston, I tell you, going for your papers. Muse, where did he go? Gaston, how should I know? Way back to the animal from a bruise. Muse, Stephen said he'd come back here if, if he found out something important. You said anything? Gaston, nothing. He won't tell me. You, don't tell me you'll trust him. Muse, oh, for pity's sake, go back to the Louvre. Go back and protect your lord and the ear. It's almost time for curfew. Street. Stephen finds himself alone in Paris once more, but while he wanders the streets aimlessly, typing, trying to work out what the next move should be, he cannot risk returning to the house of Degorty to his certain Nicholas is at home, and then he cannot be sure that Gaston will not have poisoned Nicholas against him. Despite this, Stephen no. knew that it is vital, he tells the Hatterlots he's learnt about a plot to murder a sea beggar. The darkness falls, he realizes no alternative but to return to the house. Curfew is due, he needs shelter for the night. Let's hope that Nicholas will be prepared to listen to him. Stephen is tracing his route back to the house. He senses that he's being followed. Stephen hurries, then a flight of steps that lies in wait for the shadows of his quarry to reach him. The bells are tolling, and. Oh, Steve, Anne! What are you do- doing following me? Anne, I'm sorry, monsieur. I didn't mean any harm. Stephen, what? What are you doing back here? The curfew's ringing. Go back to the house, Anne. No, I can't go back there now. You know where to find me. I want you to come. I want to come with you. See him, but you can't. I mean, uh, why? And you were kind to me. You're the first one that ever was. Please don't send me back there, uh, Stephen. I can't take you with me. I'm. Got, I know where to go myself. Oh well, I know Paris. I help you find somewhere. Stephen, well, yes, Anne. Do you know who the sort sea beggar is? Anne, what? Stephen, who is the sea beggar? Steve, Anne, I don't know, Mr. Why? Stephen's going to be killed some tomorrow. All right, then. If you insist on coming with me, do you know where we could spend tonight? Anne, we cannot go to my aunt's. They'll be looking for me there. There's lots of places in Paris where no one would think of finding me. Stephen, yes, of course, pissed in his shop. Do you know how, how to get to the spots in Martin? And of course, Stephen, take me there. We've only... Take me there. I've only been there once. I don't think I can find it on my own. And I'll show you. De Courtney's house. Moves everyone, De Courtney. You're working late. Moves, I thought you were asleep. De Courtney, nonsense. I've been with the king. Moves, do you think to give me some notes? Do you wish to give me some notes? De Courtney, no, not tonight. I think I've persuaded him. Moose, you've got the king to agree to great war with Spain. De Courtney, it's possible. If he doesn't change his mind by the morning, we are to join with the Dutch. Do you know, Nicholas? After I explained the situation to him, he turned on me and said, if we do it, and I get ourselves the Dutch, you, De Courtney, will go down in history as a sea burger. A sea burger. It is a title to be proud of. <laughs>